This is not easy, boring a hole through a melee root, even with a steel bit. So why am I doing it? A fairly absurd occupation? Well, simply to make the point that if I, with my weight and my muscles and my steel bit and my specially constructed tool, am having a hard job of drilling a hole that size through a melee root, you can imagine how hard it might be for a small, fat, soft, white grub with no legs. And yet, that's a thing that they do extremely well, or grubs of the right kind. Let me get rid of that melee root and show you one that I was splitting open on the weekend for my firewood. Because as my axe went through it, it fell apart and showed me this. Where has it gone? It's buried back inside there. But inside that cavity is just that little fat white grub I was talking about. Let me put my tweezers in and see if I can haul it out. There's not much to get a grip on, but the most useful things are these. The very things that allow it to drill its way through such extremely tough timber. Very, very strong jaws. You can see them moving there, moving back and forth, and it's those that it uses to drill its way through this very tough mallee root. Let me grab it all the way out and you see what it is. Not actually a terribly attractive animal by most people's standards. Come on, mate, don't you come. It doesn't move very fast because once you're inside the mallee root, there are not many things that can get at you. But that's what it's like when it's intact. I'm going to be very careful because those jaws can give you actually quite a savage nip and they don't let go fast either. It's one of the many white grubs that you find in Australian timbers known collectively as wichities and they're all good food. The Aborigines ate them. But whereas the traditional wichity grows up to be a moth, this one doesn't. It grows up to be a beetle. And there are two kinds of grubs that uh, you can find in firewood. One grows up to be a jewel beetle, a very beautiful looking thing. This one grows up to be what's called a longicorn or a long horned beetle. They're a major pest in Australian timbers because they actually can burrow through the timber and ruin it for all sorts of things. But you can see that it's almost lost all its features. There are some little legs there. They're absolutely tiny and they don't have any role as legs anymore. But the thing that does the damage is this great pair of gnashing, chewing jaws. And they live inside the wood, burrowing away in tunnels like this, creating this brown sort of muckery, which is half chewed wood and half dropping. That's called frass. And they plug the opening of the burrow, and when they've uh, pupated inside and want to come out, they do so, pulling the, the frass plug away, and off they go. What do they come out as? Well, it's a real beauty in the beast story, because they come out as something like this. This probably isn't the species that that grub will turn into, but you can see it's a most elegant beetle. You can see where it gets the name longicorn from its long horns. Any insect that has antennae as long as that, you can bet your boots, is a nighttime flyer because they can't see, it's dark, and they use the antennae instead. But that's what it's going to be. And so if you ever go splitting firewood and out of the tumbles one of these white grubs, you can bet your boots you're on the track of a longicorn beetle. <laughs>